This is Mr. Smith, and here's how to make some album art, which is actually a project that I'm working on right now. Here's the rubric for it. So when you hand this in, it's going to have to be saved as a PNG file and is going to need to be square. Usually when you create a new file in an image editor, it wants to make it a rectangle, so you're going to have to make sure it's a square. You're going to need to use your Edmodo username as your artist name. No coming up with something else. You already came up with your Edmodo username, so that's what you're going to use. It needs to relate to your major in some way. So, for example, I'm technology, so my album art relates to technology. If you are a band major and you play the drum, it's going to have something to do with drums on it, etc., etc. A visual art, you might have paintbrushes or whatever. The image needs to include art from openclipart.org. I'm not asking you to draw from scratch. Drawing with the mouse is very difficult, so I'm not going to require that for my nine-week students. So we're going to go to openclipart.org because the majority of the art that's there is free to use. You don't even need to cite your sources for that because it's open source. It's public domain. So that's very useful and you're going to need to do some stuff that isn't just from openclipart.org so you can change some colors, you can apply some filters stuff that you may have done with the Creative Commons assignment which is a level 2 assignment on the website as well so let's get started, here's the sample that I made earlier and we are going to make a new one, so we're going to go to file and we're going to go to new, not create new, the very first option and I put in 600 by 600. You can put in different numbers so long as they're both the same. I strongly recommend 600 by 600 because it gives you enough room to play around in, but it's not so large that you're going to run into issues with the computer getting really, really slow. Remember, these computers are kind of old. They're older than our kindergartners. So, you know, best to not make this number be too large. If you were doing this professionally, then you'd be adding a lot more zeros there, but they'd still be square. All right, let's hit OK and we have a new blank image which looks kinda boring so we're gonna make some changes here and what I did on this version of it is I used the gradient tool here and I just clicked and drug across and that made it go from black to white and I can change how the gradient works on here if I want to I could make it be Technicolor if I wanted to something like that maybe I don't know but you know, I, I like the traditional black and white idea, so let's drag that over there like that. And I could drag it in other directions if I wanted to. It's all good. Then I applied a filter. I went in and I went to artistic. And what I personally did was I did, I think I did cubism if I remember correctly. I'm not saying you have to do this. You can play around with the other filters. You can throw in lens flares. You can throw in distorts. You don't even need to use the gradient tool, but there needs to be something in here in the background. Okay? So I'm going to go to artistic and I'm going to pick uh, cubism again. And I'm not going to play with these settings because they're just where I had them before. Hit OK. And pow, I've got a more interesting texture in the background. Now, for my art from openclipart.org, I did a search for technology and hit search. You of course would type in something to do with your major. You might not get the best results by typing in the name of your major. You might have to think of words that specifically relate to it. Um, so like if you're a dance major, maybe something to do with a particular type of dance or typing in dancer or something. You might have to play around with it. This is all open source stuff, so the people who are uploading these images are putting in their own keywords. Some of them put in really good keywords, some of them didn't. Now I picked the floppy disk right here for my image, which you may or may not have seen outside of the save icon on programs, but this is how I used to save stuff to computers many years ago. So I got a little nostalgic and picked this image. I could pick others if I wanted to. I could pick headphones or speakers or I've got five pages at least here of stuff that I could pick from. Now, when you are going to save this, don't click on this to save it because what's it going to do is it's going to save it as an SVG document and you don't want that for this particular assignment. SVG files are really cool and I have my majors use them, 
but for this particular project you want it to be a PNG file, which is the second option here, PNG. Now you have to tell it how big a file you want. Now if you want a small image, maybe 200 pixels, type in 200 and click PNG and it will give you an image that's 200 pixels wide. If you want something larger, you type in a larger number. I think the limit is 600, 600, 500, something like that, but for this particular example I typed in 500 and got this, then I right clicked on it and I picked save image as. Now I've already done that, it's already saved, so I'm not going to do that again. I have it over here in this folder right here. Okay, so back to this. What's really cool about GIMP right now, the new version of GIMP which I've installed on the computers, is I can click on this and just drag this over and pow, there it is. And if I don't like it in the middle, I can use the move tool, which is this one right here, and I can drag this around and put it in a different location. I've made this kind of big so I don't have a lot of room to move it, but if I had brought in a smaller image I could place it in different locations. I could have it in the corner, I could keep it right in the middle if I wanted to. It's up to you. Now I need to add my text and to do that I'm going to use the text tool here. And I've already picked my font. I picked one called Architect's Daughter because it's kind of, it looks like a handwriting font. And back in the day when we used these, we would write on the labels with some type of marker. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make it look like that. And I'm going to name my album Save Your Work because it's something I tell people to do frequently. So. Save Your Work is the name of my album. And you know what? I'm going to have this be a red marker. So I am going to click over here. I could click up here too if I wanted to. And I'm going to pick red. And I picked it before, so I'm going to click here because it's a recent thing I've selected. But I could use the color picker here to pick the right value and pick the right color up here. But like I said, I already picked red before. So I'm going to click that and hit OK. And now I've got this nice red marker that says save your work. And let's let's change that. That should be a capital Y. It's a title. Crying out loud. Alright, now let's now that's too small for my Edmodo username. Let's make this larger by clicking on that square and dragging it. And in here I'm going to write my username, which when I made it, I made it all lowercase, so I'm gonna make it all lowercase here. You can modify capitals if you really want to I guess and I'm gonna have that be a red marker as well okay and I think that's cutting off the bottom of the G so I'm gonna make this text box be a little bit larger there we go alright so those are the basics of arranging this but you know what I want to do a little bit more I want to rotate this now that gets to be a bit of a challenge because these are three different things if we look over here in the layers menu I've got my background I've got the image I brought in I've got Save Your Work and I've got the Art Guy. Those are all different layers and each one moves separately. So I could even go in with the Move tool and click on the Art Guy, if I can actually click on the Art Guy, and move. I can move everything around as you see here. Let's undo all that because I didn't want those changes. Now what I can do is I can merge layers together. Now keep in mind that once you merge them, you can't unmerge them to edit them again. So I'm making sure this is how I want it to look before I do this. I click on a layer, I right click on a layer rather over in the layers menu and I look for where it says merge down. And I click that, it's going to merge that layer with the layer below it. In this case, save your work is going to become the same layer as the floppy image. So merge down and do the same thing for the art guy. Merge down and now this is one thing. It's like grouping in frames but you can't ungroup it. It's like that forever. If I wanted to get that off of there I would have to start over or go in with the eraser tool and try to erase it and that's a bit of a pain. Now last stuff I want to do before I export this I want to have this floppy disk turning a little bit. I'm going to use the rotate tool for that. There's other tools here you can play with. There's the scale tool, there's the shear and perspective tools which are all kind of neat. Ooh, you know what? Maybe I won't rotate. I already... Well, rotating is fun. You click on the rotate tool, click on what you want to rotate, and then you can change the angle to turn it. But let's cancel that. Let's do instead, let's do the perspective tool and click on this here. And now what I can do is I can bend this in a weird way 
here like so I think this looks kind of neat and that looks about even hit transform and there we go so there's my album art oh, I'm still doing that let's get out of that tool there's my album art and I'm almost done because it's not done if you haven't saved it I've got to save my work now remember in GIMP if you go to save it saves it as a GIMP file which is great for going back and editing it later but not so great for handing it in to export this as a PNG you've got to go to export click on that and for me it already has PNG selected because I've selected it before if you don't see PNG up here you've got to click on this plus down here and find PNG and it's alphabetical so you don't need to search too hard if you know your alphabet uh, PNG is in there element OP PNG image right there I recommend changing the name to something to do with the project so in this case GIMP album, and I'm going to put GIMP album too because I already saved GIMP album already, so I don't want to get an overwrite notice. And hit export. And you can ignore everything in here, just leave it like it is, and hit export again. And now you have a PNG file that you've exported that you can hand in for a grade. If you have any questions about how to do this, please don't hesitate to ask.